single displacement. The single displacement types, I think, are the hardest types out of the five. If I had to pick one that's the hardest, it's usually this guy. It gives the most trouble to most people. So if you can follow me through this one, the other ones are easier. I think this is the hardest. Okay, so a single displacement. How are you going to spot those from the other ones? Single displacements, it talks about how an element's trying to take the place of an element in a compound. You will always have an element, fake element A, whatever that is, plus compound BC. So it's always an element plus a compound, an element plus a compound. When you look at the examples here, here's a compound element, element, compound, right? That's how you can spot when it's a single displacement. That's what you'll see. The tricky part about the single displacements is you have to figure out, well, what's going to combine with what on the other side of the arrow? So my analogy for this guy Single displacement reactions are like someone cutting in at a dance. Okay, let's see, who can I pick on in here? Oh, I have an idea. Surya and I, oh. <laughs> since he was frantically pointing at Bobby over there, like, pick on Bobby, pick on Bobby. Um, Surya and I are dancing at a dance. <laughs> and then Joe taps Surya on the shoulder and says, yeah, no, no, smacking. He taps Surya on the shoulder and says, excuse me, Surya, I want to dance with Mrs. Carlson because she's the hottest chemistry teacher at Friend High School, right? So, so Joe, a boy, takes the place of Surya, a boy, when they're dancing. Just like boys would replace boys, metals are going to replace metals. Non-metals replace other non-metals. So, the how it's always an element with a compound, an element with a compound. The element is the person that's trying to cut in. And the compound is the couple that's dancing. So when we look at these couple examples here, we have a couple, aluminum's dancing with sulfate. Okay? Now calcium wants to cut in. So calcium, you'd say, is calcium a metal or a non-metal? Well, it's to the left of the stairs, so it's a metal. So calcium taps the aluminum on the shoulder and says, excuse me, aluminum, I want to take your place. You have to go away. I want to dance with the sulfate, right? So it taps the aluminum on the shoulder and says, get out of here. I'm taking your place. So then we can have calcium and sulfate dancing, and aluminum gets the boot. Now they're off to the side. Okay. In our number 13 example, we have chlorine, the element. Sodium and bromine are dancing, right? They're our compound. Chlorine's the one, the element that's trying to cut in. So we'd say, okay, element chlorine is a non-metal, so we need a non-metal. Chlorine's going to talk to the non-metal and try and take their place. So chlorine taps bromine on the shoulder, says, excuse me, bromine, you go away. I want to be with the sodium instead. Yes, sir, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to see who is the one cutting in a metal or is the one cutting in a non-metal. Now, what starts to get people a little confused is the numbers that come over and the numbers that don't come over. So I'm going to wipe out some of these arrows just to make it a little cleaner to look at. Okay. But what gets cause some people confused is, wait a second. Okay. On the left-hand side here, I see a four and a three, and on the right-hand side, you kept the four, but you lost the three. Why did we keep the four, but lose the three? Or for example, on the left-hand side, I see a two, and the right-hand side, there's no little two. Why did we not keep the two, but we did? We kept the four, but not the threes and the two, so why are we keeping some numbers and not all of them? What you have to do is think about why those numbers are there. The numbers on the left-hand side, this 4 is here because that's just part of what sulfate is. Sulfate is SO4. That's just part of sulfate. The 3 is here for charge balancing purposes. Okay? 
for charge balancing purposes. Same with the two, right? The two is there for charge balancing purposes. You don't have the little numbers that are there for charge balancing purposes on the left. They don't follow. If it's part of what an ion is, then it does come over to the other side. So let's try some of these guys out. We've got magnesium chloride. Potassium's trying to cut in. So the one that's trying to cut in is a metal. So it's going to take the place of another metal. It's going to take the place of Mg. So we're going to put K with Cl. Mg gets the boot. We made a new compound, right? We put K with Cl. That wasn't the case on the left-hand side. Anytime you make a new compound, you have to check the charges of the things you're putting together. Well, K is plus 1 and Cl is minus 1, so that's okay. KCl is good. Now we have to balance overall. So we've got two chlorines on the left. I need two chlorines on the right. Put a 2. I have two Ks, so I need two Ks. There's another two. These guys must be ones. The reason the little two didn't follow in this case is because the reason the two is on this side is for charge balancing when it's with the magnesium. That's not with the magnesium on the right-hand side, so it's not necessary for it to follow over. So is today's example... Oh, totally. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. You can uh, dance with all the other lovely ladies in the room, Joe. Anyone that will have you. <laughs> okay. We've got H3PO4 and magnesium. We'll try that guy out. Okay, so you say, all right, magnesium's a metal. It's going to take the place of the metal. Uh-oh, there's no metal. So now what do we do? Well, when you have hydrogen's kind of weird. Hydrogen's a non-metal. Like, so is phosphorus and oxygen. Hydrogen's a non-metal, but hydrogen's the only non-metal that makes positive charges, right? All the other non-metals make negative charges. Hydrogen makes positive charges. You will know if you've put the wrong things together when you go to check the charges of your new compound. Let's just say you goof up and you try to put H and Mg together. Let's just try it out. So you'd say, well, H is plus 1 and Mg is plus 2. Wait a second, plus and a plus, that doesn't make sense. You can't have two positive things come together. They're not attracted to one another. They repel one another. That doesn't make sense. So we'd say, no, 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 I, I put the wrong ones together. It's not H and Mg that goes together. The Mg goes with the PO4. Magnesium's going to go with phosphate. Now we made a new compound, so we have to check the charges of our new compound. Magnesium's plus 2, phosphate's minus 3. So it makes Mg3, PO4, 2. And hydrogen got the boot. Now what's special about hydrogen? Off Hofbrinkel. Hofbrinkel. Hydrogen's by itself on this side. Yeah. Oh, we can't forget about our Hofbrinkels, right? Hydrogen's by itself on the right-hand side. It used to be with phosphate, but not anymore, so now it's lonely. So it has to be H2. Now that we have that written, now we can go through and balance. Who's a balancing wizard? You got a balance already? Two, three, three, one. <laughs> two, three, one, one, three. There we go.